some viewers may find the following video disturbing. Viewer discretion is advised. Hey everyone, welcome to the discussion for Slay the Spire, the board game. Uh, now this is actually interesting, because I remember when this went on crowdfunding. I and I, was, I do. I remember the very day. I remember the I hour. Was, I, was, I was pants around the ankles mid jork, and I was like, I was slaying the spire. Mid jork. I yeah. was straight beating my knee. Yeah, to slay the spire, rule 34, ironically. And then I Twist was, in my heart. Yeah, it was, a, now, it was like, oh man, it's going on Kickstarter. So I. So slay the spire is not a roguelike that I frequent. Um, I played it a couple times. It's fun. Yeah, like it's it's clearly very well made. Yeah, like it is a a clean, uh, amazing example of a roguelike. Mm -hmm. It's quick, um, fast paced, very quick, very hard, yeah. very difficult, and but it's it, random. Exactly. So it's like you, yeah, it's, you got no one to blame. There's, I mean, my favorite roguelike that I have hundred percent is actually Hades. Yeah, um, because I prefer the rogue. I prefer rogue lights because yeah. of meta progression and ways to be like, okay, I didn't do well this turn, but I got some permanent I have stuff progress. that'll make me better next time. Exactly. Yeah. Uh, and Slay the Spire isn't that, but it was always intriguing that people who really like this, it's like this is almost the perfect transition into a board game. Mm -hmm. What made me not want to get this was because it's like, well, if it's so close to the video game, why not? Just play the video game. Exactly. But it's got co-op. That's why I was... And I kept hearing good things about it. And I'm like, you know what? Maybe it would be a lot more fun and uh, co-op. And it 100% is. Yeah. This game... It translates very well. Which makes sense because the video game's a deck builder. Yeah, exactly. This, this is a deck builder. Um, I really, really like this game. Mm -hmm. I think... The production is amazing. They they made it because taking things from a video game. Whenever a lot of IPs and a lot of video uh, board games that are like video game esque, um, the Dark Souls board game, uh, Bloodborne, or Monster Hunter, or hell even Isafarian Guard that isn't a video game but it mm -hmm. plays like one, has, still have difficulty removing the fiddliness mm -hmm. of it. It's like it becomes such a pain in the ass to reset or set up because it's like well in a video game it's so instant. Mm -hmm. They found a way to make this as clean yeah. and effort as possible without removing anything. I just want to know how far I was from my golden ticket. <laughs> um, oh, I, was, I, was like, I thought it was my next one. Oh, I was two away from getting getting my golden ticket. It would have been my very next one. Oh my um, but what's so fascinating about this game is the fact that every single character... One, the production and storage system is amazing. I was pretty far. Um, yeah. The... The way that every single card is upgradable mm -hmm. without by making them double printed and then providing the sleeves mm -hmm. uh, because that's a core element to the game is upgrading your cards. Now I can't remember in the video game. I think you can upgrade the card more than once. Mm -hmm. I could be wrong. I, I don't, don't think you. Is it just once? I think you it's can just upgrade the cards. Okay. Yeah. Um, but. There's so many different avenues to a game like this. Uh, mm -hmm. So many different strategies that just implore you to try something new every single time. And, hell, even doing Act 1 over and over and over, um, like, this is the uh, the second time that I've lost to the boss. Mm -hmm. And in uh, in a lot of other games, I feel like I would be annoyed by that, but I think because this is a roguelike... It's fast. Yeah. And it still feels unique every right. time you get to it. Exactly. So it's like, you know that, I mean, Act 1 has, I think, three, yeah, has three bosses. So it's like, I mean, you you theoretically could know exactly which boss you're going to get because mm -hmm. on the back of these are, five, like, you roll a die to set up. So it's like five and six, I know the slime boss is coming up. That's probably the hardest of the three. Nope. <laughs> oh, okay. No, I mean, you would think, I actually was like, oh man, he might be easy because you have a lot of AoE. The one that I got was the Hexaghost, and he puts in a bunch of burn. Oh. So, which didn't affect me, because I, whenever I fought him, it was uh, a matter of I had ways to discard cards, mm -hmm. so I didn't have to deal with it. He just got rid of them. Yeah. Um, but he's, they start to hit really hard. Mm -hmm. But that's part of the strategy, is that if I go to set up for Act 1 again, I roll a 5, I know that it's the slime. It's the slime, So yeah. you kind of are going to build a little bit different to do better as the game goes on. And I can't remember if in the video game you know I don't think what boss it's going to be. 
I think it's I think it's random. Yeah, random. I think it is RNG. So you have a little bit more control here, which is fine because I feel like I don't know. I feel like the video game is easier because I feel like I've had better chance. It could just be complete yeah. luck, but I feel like I've been able to beat the bosses at least in Act One. Yeah, I've gotten through Act One a few times. Yeah. Um, but it's still not easy. Yeah. Um, it's the same thing as like, did you ever play Dicey Dungeon? Nope. It's another one that's very similar to this. Um, but it's, it's more of a roguelike because you can upgrade your character. I see. Stuff. Um, but it's also still a deck builder. Oh, okay. Um, and it's also, uh, drafting, dice drafting. Gotcha. Uh, it's very fun. Okay. Um, I think it's on Game Pass. Cool. Yeah. Okay. But it, it, it's very reminiscent. It's just a different way to do something very similar to mm -hmm. this. Um, I think what I'm more amazed by is every character has their own separate deck. Yeah, which, which is again, awesome. It's so It's, it's so unique. Cool. It's this fun. Is, yeah, there's no seating or anything. You just mm -hmm. shuffle this deck, mm -hmm. and you might get into a situation where you can get some, some rare cards, mm -hmm. uh, which, again, are character-specific. I don't know what the... Well, actually, I can look it up because people have gotten their um, their order or their, their pledges. So, Slay the Spire. Uh, people say... Oh, people say Best at Two. 75% of people say Best at Two. Interesting. Interesting. 70, yes, which is funny enough, 75 people. Yeah. I would at sixty percent say they recommend it at one. Fifty nine percent say they recommend it at three, and fifty nine percent. So it seems like the consensus it's is good across the board. Yeah, best at two. Right, because really all that changes with uh, with more characters is boss HP is higher, elite HP is higher, and there's more. There's a, yeah, there's gonna be more. Everyone has their uh, uh, their own row. Their own row, which I thought was gonna be kind of tedious and annoying, but I really. What, what hooked me on this game was the fact that almost from, like, the very first... Not the very first fight there, but, like, your first fight in here is mm -hmm. you're immediately talking about what's in your hand. Yeah. And thinking about, okay, well, if you do this and I can do this. Mm -hmm. Kind of like... I can clear out most of my row and then help you with yours. Exactly. Or, yeah. or it's like, oh, okay, if you're going to hit him really hard, then let me do this attack first because I need him to be at full HP and then I can make him vulnerable. And hit him even harder. And now you can hit him harder and do 10 damage or something. Yeah. There's just so much of that back and forth, like Oathsworn, where it's like the liquid turns. Yeah. Instead of me being like, well, I have to do my I have to do turn. all my stuff and then you do all your stuff. Yeah. yeah that's very, um, yeah, I like that. And those are my... I think that's the best way to do something like this. I agree. Uh, or any co-op, almost. Because playing the... Like, if we were to do this, like, Isofarian, where it's like, yeah, we can pick who goes first, but you still have to do all your stuff. Exactly. Now, that type of co-op still has a ton of synergy between the two it characters. Does, yeah. But there are times where it's like, oh, okay, well, I need... I can set up for your next turn. Mm -hmm. So this feels more like immediate gratification, but still with long-term planning. Mm -hmm. Yeah, um, I agree. I love the relics. I think the relics just drawn those. I mean, there's this huge stack of yeah, them. Yeah, the relics were all cool. Like, that determines your build, which is my favorite type of roguelikes, where it's like you just get a bunch of them, and it's like, mm -hmm. ooh, because I have this, this, and this, that's going to allow me to become way more powerful with mm -hmm. the cards. I mean... Yeah, I mean, whenever I play games like this, it's I'm always like, how many relics can I get? I know. Yes. I know. To like, feed me. <laughs> well, just like... Uh, uh, Gunfire, mm -hmm. Reborn. It's like, how many scrolls can I have? Oh, I have a million? Same <laughs> with uh, Risk of Rain. Yes. <laughs> Risk of Rain is great about that. I forgot that's another roguelike. Because yeah. it's just, I mean, get as much stuff as you can. Yeah. And they it adds to your character, which I think is fun. With, yeah, that is a very fun, yeah. uh, aesthetically pleasing thing. But yet this game is still so brutal. Mm -hmm. Like, for the run-through, I was hoping to do, to showcase more. Because I think people who watched my Gen Con video... Uh, asked, they're like, oh, we really want to see Slay the Spire, uh, probably Acts 2 and 3, and it's like, well, I'll we try. Get to <laughs> yeah, I'll try. Now, what's, what's cool is they have these unlocks mm -hmm. on here, which, oh, I forgot about the app. There's mm -hmm. an app in here Dumb, for, for the game. stupid yeah. idiot. Which, one, has a rule book, but it also um, has the music. Has the music. 
I don't want to get copyright restricted. Yeah. Uh, but you can click on progress, and so in here, and it saves it. Whenever you finish a game, each player checks one box per boss defeated, plus one extra box each. You must check boxes for your character until they are all checked, and that allows you to unlock cards for your character. Awesome. Yeah. On top of that, kind of like what Dead Cells does with the keys. The cells. The cells. Yeah. After So after you defeat an Act 2 boss, uh, you unlock Ascension 1, mm -hmm. which Ascension 1 is harder elites. You open the Ascension pack and replace elites in each act with the Ascension 1 elites. Nice. So they have in here ways for you to kind of legacy it mm -hmm. to make it harder and just give you more and more plus going on pretty much yeah and again it's all clean mm -hmm. and organized in this one box it's on a million different expansions yeah. i think uh, it like i mean do you have any negatives on the game not particularly um no i think it's i think for what it is and i mean just being transitioned from video game to this this is pretty Good. I mean, I'm is, so impressed. Is, yeah, it's very well done. This was a game that I was looking at Gen Con, saw it was going to be sold there, and I was like, "Yeah, if I see it, uh, you know." But then day one, uh, I didn't, I couldn't find it, and mm -hmm. I couldn't even find the booth that it was at. I'm like, "Oh, I guess it's not here." Because sometimes the uh, the board game geek uh, geek list of Gen Con releases mm -hmm. isn't accurate, and I'm like, "Okay, well, that's fine. I, I like, I don't need it." And then the end of day one, I walked by and I was like, "Oh, here it is." And they had sold out. Yeah. So I was like, okay, next day, uh, I'll just try and get there early. And yeah. they had 100 copies each day of the collector's edition. And that line was pretty huge, but I was able to snag a copy of this, which came with the metal coins, the character play mats. Nice. I think the only thing Kickstarter that I didn't get is, I believe, this is play mat. They have neoprene. Neoprene. And I think there's like an extra pack of okay. cards. But for the most part, the collector's edition is the Kickstarter. Yeah. And this was the only game I got a chance to play while at Gen Con. And I was, like, hooked. I was, like, I'm, yeah. I'm amazed. Yeah. It's super fun. And in terms of negatives that I have, I think from what some... Because whenever I was playing this, there was a guy who had had his own Kickstarter copy, and he was raving about it. Yeah, until and, he, and then he was like, I don't get the novelty of it. But, yeah. <laughs> yeah, dude. I told you about the guy who... Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, the KDM. Yeah, <laughs> while we were watching the KDM booth, he just walks up and he's like, excuse do you know what the novelty to this game is? And I was like, oh, no. <laughs> Triggered. I'm like, dude, that was like flashbacks. Yeah. I'm like, there's no way. Like, two thoughts. I'm like, okay, he's either making a reference or did... did did I get another guy yeah. who brought that up? You turn out it's the same dude. <laughs> what the? This is the game you were comparing it to. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, yeah, so he said that the sleeves that come in the game, mm -hmm. there's not enough to sleeve every card. Mm -hmm. Which, so, I mean, you don't really need to sleeve these yeah. because they have different they have backs. backs. Yeah. So pretty much, I, I think there are enough sleeves to sleeve everything that you need to sleeve. That would go into your deck, yeah. which is all you would need. Yeah. So, I don't know about that, but, yeah. I mean, that's really, like, my only negative. I can't say it's, it, like, a negative is it being too hard. Because, because that's, like, the point of the game. It is the point of the game. And because it's a roguelike, losing to the boss, or even if we just happen to get dicked by a random assortment of enemies. Move down, replace your tokens, and... You can, yeah, you can do that, or it's like, I'm incentivized to play again, yeah. the way roguelikes are. And it's like, okay, let's just reset, and it would take less than five minutes to mm -hmm. reseed and be like, okay, we're ready. Yep. Because the way that the cards are, your starter cards are gray-bordered, everything else uh, just goes into this deck, and if it's if it's uh, gold, you just put in your rare. So yeah. it's so easy to reset up. Now, of course, it's not as instant as a video game, but I mean, it's about the closest you can get. It, yeah, it's a physical medium. So if you're expecting instantaneous results, play the video game. Exactly. Uh, and this this did exactly what I was hoping it would do. It would it would make me enjoy Slay's Fire because it's cooperative. Mm -hmm. And another thing is that it was like I think a hundred and fifty. It's not bad, right? For the collector's edition. Yeah. So. Now, I could be completely 
breathing into things. But I remember going up to the girl that was uh, demoing it. She was like, she was able to kind of quickly show me how the game plays. Mm -hmm. And I was like, now how many characters are there? And she's like, well, right now we ha we have all four of them. And I was like, oh, okay. And the guy I was talking to who taught me this game, I was like, how many characters are in the video game? He's like, oh, the four. I'm like, oh, that's interesting because the girl said that right now they have four. And he's he's like, well, they're working on Slay the Spire 2 mm -hmm. and there's new characters coming with that. I'm like, oh, maybe she <laughs> maybe she violated her... Um, her NDA. Yeah. <laughs> so, <laughs> she's like, as she says that, someone just walks up and is like, come with me. <laughs> you just hear a gunshot. <laughs> I'm going to take you to the office. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> I'm just going to go ahead and leave. I'm gonna, I'll, I'll come back tomorrow. Uh -uh. <laughs> <laughs> you know too much. No, I swear, I, I don't know anything about Slay the Spire 2. And you have a YouTube channel. <laughs> right. So, now she could have just misspoke, and, yeah. and I'm reading way too into it. But Which is probably true. <laughs> if they're working with, content, I think it's Contention Games is the one who makes, is it Mega Crit or Contention that makes Slay the Spire? I have no idea. Whatever one of those. Uh, whoever did it. <laughs> whoever made the video game, I would imagine with the success of this, would want to do... Yeah. Uh, an expansion for the Slay Fire characters. 2. Yeah. Which would just be awesome, because I think the, the, the heart to this game is the characters. For sure. I agree. Um, yeah, like, I... I mean, it's, again, it's a very, very nitpicky thing, but uh, these boards, I hate how... I love how they're dual-layered, but yeah. I hate how the health is sectioned off. Yeah. But the, but the block but everything else isn't. is a slide. And I get it because it's like obviously your... I know, be careful with that because yeah. they do bow a little bit. Um, I, I still would much rather have the energy and the block sectioned off because mm -hmm. that... It feels more tactile. It does. I mean, but again, it's really not that big of a deal. And I, I, I understand why they did it this way because these you're moving all the time. Yeah, exactly. Your health doesn't change necessarily every fight but these yes. will change constantly yeah there is one like and i don't know maybe there are ways around it and i'm just not playing the right character or i'm or character 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 or i'm not building correctly but the both the bosses that i've lost to have been with the status effects and i don't know how to mitigate yeah how to get around that um Give you the other effect is ignore, put this on top of your, um, yeah, I mean, because that's how I've lost both times, I guess, get more energy to mm -hmm. be able to put this, to exhaust the slime, mm -hmm. or discard, have free discard abilities. Have some exhausts or something. Yeah, so maybe. Because, like, I had an artifact that let me discard, or exhaust two cards. That. Once per yeah. game. Or yeah. once per, uh. But that's after combat. they're already in your deck. Yeah, they already made it here. Right, so it's like, okay, So it's great. like, yeah, I'm still going to have a turn where I'm... Doing nothing. Yeah. So, I don't know. And again, I haven't fought the slime boss before, so maybe it's like, now that I know what it does, you set up a little bit different. You don't mm -hmm. rush it to kill them and then just get swarmed with enemies. And, because I was, we were banking on you getting a whirlwind attack. And, and I didn't. You didn't. I and didn't it's like, it oh, no. Turn. And, all and it's my, like, I got it, and I, you know, offed two of them and almost killed the third. But yeah. it's like... You know, it's like at that I, point we were already so far gone, and I actively got rid of. I didn't take any high defense cards because I was I was I was very good at doing a lot of damage to one enemy. Yeah, just exactly. dotting one enemy with poison. Mm -hmm. It's like okay, I need you to kill them all. I'm gonna kill this one guy with poison, and I'm like, got it, You're right? <laughs> and then everyone else is dead. Yeah. <laughs> So, but man, just every, I mean, these, like, because another, like, if you're fighting the slime boss, it's like, okay, maybe I build for these, because yeah. these are just free one-shot damage. Yeah, just, exactly. So, it just, it just incentivizes more replay. Mm -hmm. I agree. Um, sometimes you get a build that works, sometimes you don't. That's yeah. just the, that is the nature of the beast of roguelikes. Exactly. And... Yeah, I mean, I'd like to talk about what Acts 2 and 3 do, but I imagine they're just different enemies and way harder. Yeah. I do know... Gameplay stays consistent, it's yeah. just... Um, there actually are quick start rules, though, which is nice. Yeah. Like, you... Oh, there is an Act 4. Right. Okay, Act 4 must be unlocked, and you must obtain all three keys by the end of Act 3. Oh, wow. So that's where they are. I thought there was an Act 4. But there is a quick start where you could just... 
um, to start the game in Act 2 or later. So if you don't want to try and get through it like normal, you could just go, I just want to see what Act 3 is If you're like. a quitter. If, yeah, if you're just like, if you're a pleb. You start with one Neo bonus, seven gold, four card rewards, one transform. Uh, you roll the die three times to get whatever result you get yeah. there. One potion, four relics, two rare rewards, two boss relics, three card rewards, one card remove, four upgrades in the merchant visit once. Okay. So that is neat that it's even in here, though. Yeah. They have a way for you to check out yep. the game. And the they have achievements, like, just to unlock. I don't know what they do, um, except just give you that. So achievements, Jax hit the strength limit. Uh, of 8, Catalyst hit the poison limit of 30. Mm -hmm. <laughs> just like, stack. Yeah. I don't know what they do, but maybe just they're just that. Just achievements. Yeah. Which are probably achievements pulled from the video game. I bet. As an optional game mode, you can play a daily climb, roll the die twice, and gain one random game modifier from each section below. So if we're playing a daily climb, it's a 4, which is transformed all gear up, uh, or all card, um, Acquires become transform a card, oh. which means you get to discard a card from your deck and just draw the top card. Oh, cool. And then six, prismatic shard. <laughs> prismatic shard. <laughs> Start with the prismatic shard special relic. Also, when you gain a card, each revealed card must come from a different card reward deck of your choice. This can include colorless rewards. When you gain a rare, each revealed card must come from a different character's rare deck. So you can actually mix cards. Nice. Prismatic shard. Special Relic, which is page 19. What's that? I don't know. Why don't you know? It's the first time I pay it. Well, I don't know either. But there's different ways to play the game included in, in here, which is just amazing. Yeah. And they also make it easy on you with your character's upgrades. Mm-hmm. And the app. app is cool. And the app is there for rule reference and music and progress. Mm -hmm. Very and cool. yeah, it's it's pretty fantastic. I agree. So, on the scale of 1 to 10, Keith, what Two. are you giving? Yes, let's buy this good Garbage. Uh, I mean, I, I'm going to throw like a 9.5. 9.5? Yeah. God damn. It's super solid. Um, I, a perfect 10 is just so hard to deal out, but this is about as close as I, I, I have nothing to nitpick. I know. Thing. Yeah. I mean, we're looking, we're literally just being like, I wish the energy and block was sectioned off. Yeah. Just stretching for something. Exactly. Um, it's fun. I mean, it, it is exactly what it says it is. And I, I like that. I am going to give it a 10. I think again, I... If, if it was like, I do my turn, you do your turn, you only deal with your row, then I'd be like, whatever. But the fact that it has such, almost from the get-go, synergistic card play, mm -hmm. liquid card turns, able to help one another, attacks can go in any way, we just have to deal with our row so we get to see what we're dealing with. It's random, mm -hmm. but it's not like top deck random. Um... It's pretty much, to me, the perfect adaptation of a video game to a board game, which makes sense because the video game is a deck builder. Exactly. It has infinite, uh, oh, I mean infinite, yeah. character builds. Replayability like, is there. I mean, it's got everything that you would want. Exactly. From and a roguelike, but it's a board game. The insert, is, the organization is awesome. The extra stuff of, of the app with the music mm -hmm. and the unlocks and the ascension and the daily climb and the achievements and the act four stuff the fact that if you just keep getting your ass beat in act one and you can skip you can skip and see what act two is about mm -hmm. they just thought of literally everything and it's fun it's yeah and that, at the end of the day it is fun yeah like losing uh to the boss is not like oh like I don't want to. I don't want to do this again. Yeah. It's like okay. Well, now we know what we did wrong. Let's try again. And it's quick. Yeah. I mean, act like each act is probably about. I guess I don't technically know about act two and three, but uh, in my games of act one, it's about an hour. 
Yeah. And I mean, it says 60 to 90 minutes. I want, that's probably per act. Yeah. And it has a save system. Yeah. If you if you if you win Act One, you, you can pack it up. Yeah, exactly. So no, it's great. So yeah, I I got pretty much no no complaints. I we ain't got no beef with this game. And it's all condensed. It's not again a million expansions that I have to you know for like not fit in the box, mm-hmm. or it's like oh okay I have Slay the Spire. Let's quickly set it up. Yep. And I'm I don't know about Slay the Spire two. Um, I don't even know how many updates Slay the Spire had as a video game to get to where it's at. I today. mean, it's still relatively active, as far as I know. I know, the, yeah. The Reddit. Uh, funny enough, I do get promoted the Reddit page, but I'm not actually on it. Yeah. Um, I think. I mean, I've played it recently, and it's still fun. Yeah. So. I would, I'm just wondering how like many updates they had to balance it out. Oh yeah. Uh, so I'm curious if. Mega Crit or Contention Games is actually going to do a Slay the Spire 2 with new content. I would yeah. imagine so, but maybe they might wait. Um, I'm into it. Yeah, I I really don't have any any complaints here. And for the most part, it's also self-contained. Like, yeah, this looks like it's a table hog, but not really. Mm-hmm. It's a table hog because we set it up that way. Right. Like, but I, we still have all this space. Yeah, and then, like, you have your static stuff, which I thought was going to get mm-hmm. tedious or, like, repetitive, but mm-hmm. it's like, that stuff's static, but then these are random yeah. and curated in such a way that feels fresh every time you play it. Exactly. And every act, of course, has different encounters and elites mm-hmm. and summons and, and events. Yeah, it's, 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 it's fantastic. Yeah, very fun. So... That's our thoughts on Slay the Spire. Let us know what you think of the game in the comments below. Other than that, like, comment, share, and subscribe, and have a wonderful whatever time of day is for you. Hey everyone, thank you for watching, and I really hope that you enjoyed the video. If you would like to see more of my content, go ahead and click that subscribe button and the bell to be notified whenever I upload any new content. If you feel like supporting the channel, you can go ahead and click that Patreon link to be taken to my Patreon, and any help is truly appreciated. Other than that, stick around for any any other run-throughs or reviews or cool top tens or whatever I feel like putting on. Other than that, like, comment, share, and subscribe, and have a wonderful whatever time of day it is for you.